Now, it is Friday fun day, but, you know, we also like to do it for the home team on a Friday. Uh, Shout-outs to Big G Wings. They're going to be up here a little bit later for the kings and queens of comedy, uh, of, of go-go, not comedy. Kings and queens of go-go. Uh, but we also want to salute a hometown hero, especially on a Friday. This young lady right here um, has gone viral after uh, we saw, like, a disturbing video uh, in D.C., was that earlier this week? It's like earlier this week. Yeah. Now you gonna have to talk it to that mic right okay. there. There you go. Just come on close to it. <laughs> um, but there was a, a video of an officer basically had his gun pointed at a homeless man, and you hear a woman's voice in the background, and she's coaching this man who's visibly shook and visibly scared, uh, and she's trying to calm everybody down in the situation. And I actually was extremely nervous for this woman, but when I saw that everything turned out real good and what she's doing after it, I said we got to get her on the show. So, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Grace McKinnon is hey. here. <laughs> so we, we just want to salute you, Grace McKinnon. I appreciate it. Yes, welcome to the show. Um, first and foremost, like, tell us a little bit. We played a little bit of the video, like, uh, of what was going on. Tell us from your perspective what you saw. What ha- how did this come to be? Like, okay, because it's a lot. It's a whole lot of a whole lot of details. Um, so. The clip, um, what happened before the clip is I was coming back from a hospital visit. Um, I'm a social worker, so I was coming back from the psych unit, and I immediately saw the situation, and I was like, all right, bruh, I got to intervene. So I put my car in park, turned my hazards on, and was like, got to record. So I took a deep breath, got out of the car, and that's when you see the video begin. And so I was like, you know, just calm down, just get on the ground, you know. I didn't even know exactly what was going on, mm. um, but I was like, just get on the ground. I couldn't see, you know, I couldn't see another black brother die. Mm. I couldn't. And, like, for me, like, people, it's funny because, you know, everybody always wants to go viral, but it comes with a lot, you know, it comes with a lot. And so, of course, you know, you got people, you know, saying, I'm so proud of you, thank you, thank you. Mm-hmm. And then you got people saying, why did you do that? You could have, You could have died. Yeah. But for me, I couldn't, I made that decision based on, I couldn't drive by, knowing that I could have potentially saved a life. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. So I got out the car and I did what I had to do. So that was that. Um, And in the moment, I wasn't even thinking about like, myself yourself or safety. at all okay, okay. At all. it was it was at that moment it was about this man it was just about helping that man cause yeah because because i was very i was concerned for for you you know yeah, because everybody. again that that officer had his gun out and and he looked he looked scared he was you shook. know he, he was looked shook. scared just like that man looked scared and mm-hmm. it's just uh it, it says a lot in terms of like our relationship with with police yes um and just the the fact that at any mo- i just felt like at any moment that just could have gone really wrong especially yeah. because the 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 man that he has this gun pointed out again i couldn't tell what he was going to do mm-hmm. and even with you saying hey brother like just get on the ground comply yes. essentially you're telling him to comply yes. but he looked so scared mm-hmm. um so i wasn't sure if if he would do something that would cause that officer to do something i mean it just could have it was such a chain reaction that yeah. I, I had so many scenarios going through my mind just watching it uh, and i'm i'm just happy that that nothing happened but after that after the video right cuz cuz we don't see what kind of happens afterwards right did, did they arrest him did like did the police say anything to you what what happened afterwards so after I, after i stopped recording um anthony was on the ground he put his hands behind his back they put the cuffs on him and all these other officers came up it was like about four or five six of them and at that point i was like i don't want to be here anymore and right. the cops actually asked me to leave and so i got in my car and then like i drove up like a block and i just started crying mm. i was like wait this really just happened to me you know what i mean so we see things like this all the time on the news yeah it would have been justice for anthony let's walk in washington for anthony it's not enough just to have a hashtag it's not enough just to walk we got to do something Mm -hmm. you know like it's not enough like that's passive like we can't do that anymore we have to get involved in whatever way we see fit i'm not advocating for everyone that you know (laughs) Go out and, you know, yeah. do something like that. But whatever you see fit, however you can be the change um, and use your energy in direction of truth and love, you have a, you have the moral responsibility to do that as yeah. a human being. Yeah. So that's just, you know, that's just all I was doing. But I, honestly, I, I don't, the weight of it all still hasn't really hit me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm still processing and taking time for myself as well because it definitely, definitely was very traumatic. Um, today mm-hmm. is actually the first day that I've been feeling like more better. Okay. Um, or better but um yeah it's been a lot but just taking time for myself as well and and that was the other reason i want to bring you on so people can get to know you or hear who you are see there's a difference you're not just a a, a regular pedestrian coming <laughs> by when you say you're a social worker that yes, means ma'am. you see some traumatic things i'm pretty sure Every on a day. regular basis um so you're kind of a probably a bit of a lifesaver in general 
Wow, um, so there's that. a difference when <laughs> it's just like a random person versus someone who's you have a social a social worker's perspective. That means you have a you already have a perspective about people who are in. Um, very distressful situations yes. essentially yes so so you kind of have a different thought process when you see something like that yes my uh-huh. first step is to get involved how can i create change um of course like put in um things like uh, self-determination like you know i don't know what's going on mm-hmm. you know maybe you know i don't know the situation but in any situation i always assume positive like okay. someone reached out to me and said how do you know anthony wasn't in the wrong how do you know right. you know he wasn't violent right and so i framed it to the person like this you know just like you're messaging me and asking me a question i'm assuming positive you know that you're coming from a good place mm-hmm. i'm assuming that anthony's coming from a good place so in order for me to have compassion i can't be judgmental I have okay. to say, okay, I don't know what's going on. How can I help? You can't be compassionate if you have judgment towards others. Mm-hmm. And that's not love. So anything I do always is always in the direction of peace and love. Mm-hmm. Always. As first, as a human being. Second, I'm a woman of Delta Sigma Theta. So we're about public service. We're about change. Mm-hmm. And that's what my founders would want me to do. Actually, that's my moral obligation as a Delta woman. And then third of all, I'm a social worker. So... <laughs> When I became licensed, I took that oath, the, you know, the code of ethics. That's, I have, not only do I have a human obligation, I have a, excuse me, a professional obligation as a woman of Delta Sigma Theta, and I have a professional obligation as a social worker. So what else was I supposed to do? Drive by with all of that, you know, that like defines me as a human being. What else was I supposed to do? Logically, Mm -hmm. like it just doesn't make sense to drive by a you know our, our brother or sister when they're in need that's not humane yeah and the world needs more compassion we need whatever that looks like for a person like yeah. i said i'm not advocating anyone to go and put themselves in harm's way and Absolutely. some people may say grace that was crazy but i felt comfortable doing it i wasn't focused on fear mm. in any in any moment when there's fear and love i'm always going to choose love because love is always stronger than fear yeah. so it doesn't matter like if anthony's scared if the police officer is scared why would i be scared mm. what is this going to be create more fear so i focused on love i focused on also on that five dollar box that i wanted to buy when i got back to the office from popeyes <laughs> so i was already making plans to eat good food Not so the five dollar box the, five dollar box, the two-piece thighs and fries you know what i'm saying like black it. and black and mild ranch and some cake and sparkles so wait a minute it I wasn't see. even a, it wasn't even a I, death did not even cross my mind like mm. and i've seen death so many times my brother died by suicide like i'm not afraid of death I'm not afraid of death. And if I would have died, if I would have, what if you gotten a shot? Then it would have been for a noble cause. Mm. And that's how I genuinely feel. Well, Grace McKinnon, I appreciate you for sharing your story, sharing your perspective. Um, question for you, did, have, are you still in contact with Anthony or were you able to reach out? I know you kind of have some initiatives set up now on his behalf. Yes. Um, I actually spoke early in the week um, with him um, on the phone and I spoke with his teachers yesterday at Kingsman uh, Kingsman Academy, which is a public charter school in Northeast. Okay. Um, and so we're kind of coordinating some things with him. They're actually in charge of helping him with housing and the bank account. So the two okay. major things that were like stressful for me, they're going to help him with. Um, I just got to figure out the logistics behind getting the funds to him. Okay. And then I want to help out other kids at his school as well because there's 40 other students at his school that are homeless so I started this project called Cozy Kits Um, so collecting winter coats scarves hats gloves um shelf stable food like granola bars mm-hmm. you know those are i was actually homeless too when i was in middle school all the way up until i got my master's degree wow. um so i know what that struggle is like and i actually had the same coat for like three years like mm-hmm. wow. like literally so i know what it's like so people asking like how can we donate to you personally we want to help you out like that's fine like i appreciate it all but i want to give back to the community so okay. if you want to you know you want to donate to me i appreciate it any monetary donations they will be going towards my project cozy kits um and you could um, check out my social media underscore gucci grace with two e's um mm-hmm. for more information on that gucci grace with two e's put an underscore in front of that we following you thank you so <laughs> much shout out to the ladies at delta sigma theta sorority Ooh. incorporated hey. and uh grace keep shining light we appreciate you for being a part of the show today thank you for having me i appreciate you as well all right let's get it let's get it for cozy kiss let's all contribute do that Everybody, right, right.